If you click this video, you probably know that Flutterflow is a tool for building awesome mobile applications. But the mobile app landscape is very competitive and Flutterflow has its limits. To create an app that has all of the features that your users expect, as well as all of the features that make your app unique, you'll need more than just Flutterflow and Firebase alone. I get rid of Flutterflow's limitations and supercharge my apps with Python. For example, notifications can be a real hassle to do with just Firebase and Flutterflow alone, and even harder with Supabase. With Python's help, I can send a notification to individuals or user groups from outside the app and follow the notification to the deep linked page. I can also get my notification badge, have the bell icon with a counter badge, list of previous notifications with red receipts, and have links from this list to the deep link pages. If you've ever tried to get all of this working with just Flutterflow, you will know frustration. Another thing that Python enables me to do is to upload user-generated media, such as images or videos or files. And I can resize them, I can stream videos in my apps, and crucially, I can have optimized images that load lightning quick. By the way, fun fact, Python was not named after the snake, it was named after the infinitely famous BBC comedy act, Monty Python, one of my all-time favorites. Anyway, I can also control my email flows and send emails to whoever I want in any style that I want in any quantity that I want, and there's nothing that makes an app look cheap like bad transactional emails. I get full database control, including full text search, which is something that Firebase just doesn't give you, and something that Agolia will charge a premium on. That's not to mention AI, payment processors, ad hoc calculations, scheduling tasks, man, I could not possibly list all of the things that you can do once you get Python involved. Okay, let's dive into some details. For this tutorial, my database of choice is going to be MongoDB, and my Python framework of choice to build the API will be FastAPI. The closest relative of this would be what they call the farm stack. But since I'm using Flutterflow and not React, I guess I have to call this the FAFM stack. Patent pending. I do have a more detailed video on the fast API configuration I use for my apps, link in the description. So here I'm gonna focus on the parts of the code that more directly relate to Flutterflow. The first thing is Firebase. Firebase is amazing for push notifications and by that, I mean, it's amazingly free. Especially when you're using Flutterflow, trying to not use Firebase for push notifications is an absolute foot gun. Seriously, just use it. Firebase authentication is a really strong choice even outside of the mobile app world. And Flutterflow handles all the cloud functions for making it work like magic. So Firebase Auth is in too. There's an established Python library for Firebase, so you just install it and it controls everything. In the Firebase console, you'll go to Project Settings, Service Accounts, and then Generate a new private key. Keep credentials like this safe, keep them out of version control. I use environment variables to hide my secrets, and these get injected into my app here in the settings file. These environment variables live in another folder, a folder from which I spin up all of my databases and I manage my production environments. There's a million cloud providers and a few steps involved with deploying the API, so I'll cover that in a different video. But once it's set up, you'll rarely have to worry about it. But have a look at some of the variables that I inject here. There's basic app info, deep link info to inject into push notifications and database connection credentials. This one is a text string containing the Firebase private key that we downloaded a moment ago. And that gives this app full admin access, which is something we can do because this API is totally protected. And I also have web app settings in here because using this same API, I can fully power an admin panel or even a full web version of my app. Flutterflow isn't really a good choice for web apps, but using this backend, you can power any other kind of front end with any other technology that you like. No vendor lock, no scaling issues. You could build an enterprise application just using this as a starting point. I also have full control over sending emails. I can plug into AI models. I can create payment gateways, handle media and images. Look, this is literally unlimited. Python is so powerful and it really is the easiest coding language to learn in my opinion. Okay, let me show you how the push notifications happen. Since Flutterflow uses cloud functions under the hood to manage device tokens via Firebase Auth, the tokens live in Firestore, and I love this because I've managed tokens myself and it's a pain in the ass. But I don't use Firestore for anything else, not even the notification history, because unfortunately Flutterflow hides this FF push notifications collection in its console. So I have to create my own version in my Mongo database. But that also gives me more control, so I'm better off in the long term. I create what we call a service in Python, which is a class that has methods 
and each method has a responsibility. This one takes a list of Firebase auth user IDs, and then it grabs the associated tokens from Firestore, bunches them together, and sends them all at once in an efficient way, known as a multicast. I can also add device sounds and the app icon counter badge as well, which so far Flutterflow doesn't seem capable of by itself. I also record the notifications object as it pertains to each user in my database, and that allows me to customize the notifications and show the user whether they've read it. Since I know the names of certain pages in my Flutterflow app, I can pass this info from Flutterflow to Python, and Python will attach the deep link roots to each, sending my users to the correct pages. Another really fundamental feature for any app is user-generated media, especially images. For this, I use Cloudinary, because their free tier is awesome, and I have never exceeded it. A really nice thing here is that you can generate URLs on the fly, and Cloudinary will serve an optimized image depending on your needs. So, if for instance you have a list view of items, you can grab all of the images in small size to save on bandwidth and have them load super fast. You can also reshape them as needed and then deliver a large version of just one image whenever the user needs it. This is super important for user experience. You don't want to be stuck paying fees for unoptimized images with Firebase storage when you can have optimized images for free. Just do be careful if your app is very media oriented because nothing scales big for free. The last one I'll mention is email, the unsung hero. You need an email service. Firebase Auth sends really ugly transactional emails, but these are super important for your app's brand. With the Python SDK for Firebase, you can do things like generate the email verification link to verify a user's email in Firebase Auth, and then send them an email using HTML templates that you can customize yourself to your liking. Right now, I'm liking resend for my emails. It's been really painless to set up and really quick to get going, but there's a lot of providers out there that you can choose from. But oh, there's so much you can do when you ditch Firestore and start using Python for your backends. Now, I have a master code base in Python with all of this logic already set up and ready to go. And I plan to combine this with a marketplace item for Flutterflow to get you up and running in a few clicks. Right now, I'm still working on documenting it to make it as accessible as possible, but it may be that it's ready by the time you're watching this video, so have a look in the description to find out. And if not, drop a comment and let me know that you're interested in getting your hands on it. Please subscribe if you're finding this content helpful, and let me know in the comments if any Flutterflow or Python-related topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos. And that's it. I'll see you soon.